Robin Hood Radio presents Your Health with osteopathic physician Dr. Kim Tripp, a show presented monthly on Robin Hood Radio, discussing the challenges faced and the solutions that are available for keeping vital health and well-being throughout our lives. And now, here's Dr. Tripp. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Your Health with Dr. Kim Tripp, osteopathic physician. This is the health show created to bring you vital information and discussion of all kinds of health issues on your mind and in your life from the unique perspective of traditional osteopathic medicine. First, let's clarify what osteopathic medicine means. Osteopathic medicine is practiced by fully licensed physicians in the United States with a DO degree a doctor of osteopathic medicine degree. Our practice is based on the essential relationship in all living things between structure and function. In other words, the natural interdependence between anatomy and physiology, or that between the physics of the body and its chemistry. As osteopathic physicians, we use our comprehensive and precisely detailed knowledge of anatomy and physiology to promote health and healing in our patients. We work gently with our hands to help your body restore optimal function based on optimal structure. Our medical specialty is therefore called osteopathic manual medicine. We receive uniquely in-depth training in anatomy and physiology and their relationship within your body in the context of a full physician's medical training. Only U.S. trained osteopaths are fully licensed physicians and have all of the current medical pharmacopoeia, nutritional science, and full medical training at our disposal. This means that your individual treatment may include a wide range of approaches, but it will always be founded on our gentle hands-on work. We practice from the unique perspective of first looking for the health in our patients rather than merely finding illness and disease. Our practice has been especially effective for, but is not limited to, musculoskeletal and other structural issues, as well as chronic headache, gastrointestinal problems, post-concussive syndrome, sleep disturbance, allergies, and many, many other issues. We work together with you, the patient, to help you build health and vitality in your body, mind, and spirit as the solution for health problems, rather than only treating the disease symptoms. So, in this radio show, we tackle health issues from this point of view. What can we do to help you build your health and vitality in order to prevent and heal injuries and disease? And we do that by giving you some basic information about the problem to help you understand what is happening, as well as offer solutions and guidance for helping yourself to heal and stay healthy based on our clinical experience with patients in our practice. So we're progressing through our series on the human immune system. We're going to do a bit of review to start, as we always do in shows that are part of a series, but we can't possibly do a full review at this point, So, or we won't cover any new material at all. So before we get started on today's topic, let me remind you that you can listen to all of the prior Your Health shows online at your convenience, such as the first four immune shows, by going to the Goldman Trip website www.goldmantrip.net, click on the radio show icon, then scroll down and click the individual show by topic. There are now nearly 50 shows. You can also get the most recent podcasts, including the last few immune shows, on the Robin Hood Radio website itself in the on-demand section. It's amazing that this is all at your fingertips. Okay, so let's get started on today's topic with this little review. And the immune system, of course, is clearly on everyone's mind right now in the context of the current pandemic. The human immune system is a highly complex system of interactive organs, tissues, and specialized cells that serve to protect the entire body from foreign substances and toxins, from invading microbes like bacteria, fungi, and viruses, and from our own cells gone awry by producing the immune response. The immune response is a multi-layered biology that ultimately uses many different normal cells, tissues, organs, and physiological strategies within our own body to clear these problematic substances, invaders, or abnormal cells from the body. I do want to reiterate again that normal immune system development and function rely on one basic biological principle, That is, 
the ability of that immune system to recognize substances, organisms, and cells that are in or on the body as being either self or other. And then to respond with the appropriate physiological interaction with that substance, organism, or cell. It sounds simple, but in order to function successfully, that simple biological principle must be manifested as a nearly infinite array of sensing and response mechanisms throughout our entire life, starting in utero and adapting and evolving through birth, infancy, childhood, adulthood, and old age. Today, we're gonna to tackle some of the most common and significant diseases and disorders of the immune system. To start, let's have a brief review of relevant concepts from prior shows that will especially relate to that. Recall that there are two basic systems of immune defensive response, innate and adaptive. The innate system is a kind of rapid first responder with generalized responses to all intruders and abnormal cells, including the basic inflammation response. The adaptive system takes longer to respond as it provides specific antibodies and defenses tailored to the specific intruder. The adaptive system is activated by the innate system and was explored in detail in a prior show. Both systems exist to defend us from potentially damaging organisms like bacteria, viruses, fungi, and worms, all collectively called pathogens, referring to their capacity to generate pathology, i.e. disease, as well as harmful foreign materials and toxins. Recall that the innate immune response is well named as it refers to the set of immune responses you are able to use shortly after birth. Innate immune responses are not targeted to a particular pathogen in the way that the adaptive immune responses are. In a prior show, we discussed the crucially integrated component of the innate immune response that is the inflammation response, which will come up again today. And recall that adaptive immunity is an immunity that occurs after exposure to an antigen. Remember, an antigen is a physical or chemical aspect of a pathogen that stimulates our immune response. The antigen can come from either the pathogen or from a vaccination, which we're gonna cover in the next show. This part of the immune system becomes activated when the innate immune response has not controlled an infection. Without the information from the innate immune system, the adaptive response could not be mounted. The innate immune system contains cells that detect potentially harmful antigens and then inform the adaptive immune response about the presence of these antigens. The adaptive immune system also expresses a memory function that allows for an efficient and dramatic response to reinvasion by a pathogen it has already encountered. Memory is handled by the adaptive immune system with little reliance on cues from the innate response. A memory cell is an antigen-specific B or T cell that does not differentiate into an active attacking cell during the primary immune response, but that can immediately become an active cell upon re-exposure to the same pathogen. During the primary immune response, memory cells do not respond to antigens and do not contribute to host defenses. As the infection is cleared and pathogenic stimuli subside, the effectors are no longer needed and they undergo apoptosis, a kind of spontaneous self-induced death. In contrast, the memory cells persist in the physiological library. Recall that in general, the cells of the immune system originate from what we call hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow. Cytokines stimulate these stem cells to differentiate into immune cells and this process is subject to numerous diverse feedback loops from varied physiological responses that help keep it under control. Which brings us to today's topic of what can go wrong with this miraculous and complex system. There are three general categories of problems which can affect the immune system and dozens of named disorders and diseases within each of them. The categories are immunodeficiency diseases, 
in which the immune system is weak and not responsive enough, including primary immunodeficiency diseases that you were born with. In other words, those caused by congenital issues, such as severe combined immunodeficiency, aka SCID, and secondary or acquired immunodeficiency diseases. In other words, those caused by infectious or other external agents, such as HIV AIDS or toxins like those used in chemotherapy. The second category is hyperreactive disorders in which the immune system is overly reactive to stimuli and substances that do not warrant such a strong reaction, including problems like asthma or allergic responses. The third category is autoimmune diseases in which the immune system reacts to our own body tissues and molecules as if they were other and needed defending against, such as with rheumatoid arthritis or type 1 diabetes. Let's take a closer look at all three, starting with immunodeficiency diseases. Primary immunodeficiency diseases can occur because of abnormal genetic makeup that leaves the immune system permanently impaired making it only partially functional or even essentially non-functional and therefore leaves us much more susceptible to disease and death from what in a normal person would be controlled by a fully functional immune system. There are on the order of 200 known primary immune deficiency diseases. The most challenging of the congenital immunodeficiencies is severe combined immunodeficiency disease, otherwise known as SCID, sometimes called the bubble boy syndrome. With SCID, a child has essentially no functioning immune system as they cannot produce the specialized defensive cells of the immune response, and they must be isolated from any infectious sources, hence the bubble boy moniker. Stem cell transplants can be used to treat this rare congenital disorder. Another more common example is common variable immune deficiency disease. CVID is caused by a variety of different genetic abnormalities that result in a defect in the capability of immune cells to produce normal amounts of all types of antibodies. Only a few of these defects have been identified and the specific genetic cause of most cases of CVID is unknown. Secondary immunodeficiency diseases develop when an outside factor leads to a dysfunction in the immune system for a variable period of time. Environmental toxins or allergens, chemotherapy, radiation, severe burns, certain diseases and infections such as HIV, diabetes, hepatitis, cancers like multiple myeloma, lymphoma, and leukemia, and physical trauma, especially to the spleen or liver, and malnutrition or drug and or alcohol abuse are all examples of the many, many possible causes of secondary immunodeficiency. Treatment, of course, varies widely according to the cause. Hyperreactive disorders are caused when the immune system overreacts to a substance that does not warrant such an immune response, leading to a potentially uncontrolled and decidedly unnecessary inflammatory response cascade. The classic example is allergic response to certain foods like peanuts or shellfish or to environmental triggers like animal dander, dust, mold, or pollen the immune system engages the offending substance with a particular type of antibody, in these cases, IgE, which triggers a cascade of physiological responses leading to the familiar inflammatory symptoms of red and runny nose and eyes, scratchy throat, rashes, asthma, etc. Asthma is itself a hyperreactive disorder where the airways close reflexively in response to an environmental trigger like dust or smoke or physiological changes like exertion or emotional distress, but it is not a purely immune disorder. 
More severe allergic hyperreactive reactions can also be stimulated, such as with food or bee sting allergies, leading to something called anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is a severe, potentially life-threatening allergic reaction. It can occur within seconds or minutes of exposure to something you're allergic to, such as peanut, shellfish, or bee stings. Anaphylaxis causes release of a flood of chemicals that can cause you to go into shock. Your blood pressure drops suddenly and your airways narrow suddenly, making it difficult to impossible to breathe. Symptoms can include shortness of breath, heart palpitations, rapid or weak pulse, rash, nausea, and vomiting. Anaphylaxis requires an immediate injection of epinephrine and a follow-up trip to an emergency room. If you don't have epinephrine on hand, which is often carried by those individuals with severe allergies, you need to go to an emergency room immediately. If anaphylaxis isn't treated right away, it can be fatal and it's not to be trifled with. Autoimmune disease is often considered a subgroup of hyperreactivity immune disorders because the immune system overreacts to triggers within our own physiology, leading to an attack on our own tissues by our own immune processes. This results in varied disease symptoms and often permanent tissue damage and dysfunction within the body. There are by many counts more than 100 autoimmune diseases and disorders affecting every organ, tissue, and functional system in the body. This is an indication of how comprehensive and integrated the immune system is throughout our body. These diseases include things like inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, celiac disease, rheumatoid and psoriatic arthritis, lupus, multiple sclerosis, Addison's disease, type 1 diabetes, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, sarcoidosis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Each one of these diseases has a different autoimmune mechanism that creates the specific problems involving different aspects of the immune response in relation to which specific types of antibodies attack which types of triggers or antigens, and therefore what type of damage they can cause to the specific tissues involved. But they all involve increased inflammation as part of the syndrome. And so controlling the inflammatory response is an important part of the treatment, but is not the only aspect to be treated depending on the specific disease. Exactly why the immune system goes awry in these particular ways remains largely unexplained. There are familial trends in some autoimmune diseases, but these are not 100% predictable or explicable through genetics. Treatment of all of these immune diseases and dysfunctions requires specialist care and works best when undertaken from a team approach to ensure adequate guidance and treatment to support the entire person's health and well-being throughout the treatment process. Repeated persistent infections, rashes, joint pain, inflammation, or loss of function of any body area of any kind should lead to suspicion of immune disease and requires immediate medical attention. We have much to learn, but we do know that immune health is, in general, a function of overall health and well being, including avoiding toxic exposures, minimizing stress, and maintaining a healthy diet full of fresh whole foods with a regular exercise program that includes time in nature with adequate hydration. In other words, all the usual foundations of good health and well being. There are numerous studies from around the world reporting hard data demonstrating significantly improved immune function with regular time spent outdoors in nature, and not only because of the exercise factor. The immune system is a whole body system working from macroscopic to microscopic to continually perceive, assess, and respond to the state of our health in relation to what is passing through us from the outer world to the inner world in a continuum of ecosystems completely integrated and interdependent. This is why there are so many aspects that can go awry 
and so many reasons to take good care of this extraordinary organismal system. Which brings me back to osteopathy and to the close of today's show here with a reminder that an osteopathic physician who is a specialist in osteopathic manual medicine can be very helpful for immune issues of all kinds, working gently with our hands with the involved organs, nerves, vasculature, fascias, capsules, and associated tissues to release restrictions in the physical tissues of the immune organs, the lymphatic system, the diaphragm, chest, and all blood flow, as well as to help balance the autonomic nervous system function based on anatomical detail, and to help with nutritional issues and support for whatever procedures or treatments you may be going through. Recall that all of the immune system is a complex physical entity with connections between all the parts that need to be open, flexible, and moving freely with excellent neural conduction from the nerves, optimal arterial and venous blood flow, and lymphatic drainage to remain healthy, vital, and functioning normally. Well, I ran out of time again. Thank you so much for your attention to Your Health with Dr. Kim Tripp. Remember, you can email your comments and suggestions for topics to yourhealth at robinhoodradio.com. If you have a health issue yourself and you'd like to find out about how we might be able to help you in our practice of traditional osteopathy, we are at our offices in Sharon, Connecticut, Dr. Kim Tripp and Dr. Andrew Goldman, Goldman Tripp Osteopathic Healthcare, 860-364-5990, or on the web at www.goldmantripp.net. Well, I'll be looking forward to being with you next time. Till then, you take care of yourself, enjoy your health, and thank you for listening. <laughs>